Not every deck in a new set is going to reach the ranks of tier 1 best deck in format, but that doesn't mean they can't be fun and that we shouldn't talk about them. Hey, Nick from 9card TCG, and today we're going to be looking at a deck that uses zero, and I mean zero energy, and it's not Hasumi and Electro, it's actually a Lost Zone single prize deck, and it's very, I'll, I'll be upfront, it's very similar to the one that Tricky Jim or Andrew Mahone used on his channel, uh, but I did make some changes to it, but yeah, it's a really interesting deck, I absolutely love the Comfy Engine, Crammer, and all that kind of stuff, so it's a lot of fun, and we're just gonna kind of take a look at the deck list, but before we do, if you haven't already, do me a favor, uh, subscribe to the channel, leave a like and a comment. Those things tell YouTube this is a good channel and other people should watch it. If you want to come hang out live, I live stream on Twitch mm, a lot of days of the week. So you can go check out Twitch and Twitter for the schedule because I have a post there. I think I have a post somewhere on YouTube as well. But yeah, uh, with all that said, let's head over to PTCGO where we can take a look at this deck. The main engine that makes the deck work is Comfy. Comfy has the flower selecting ability where we can look at the top two cards of our deck and then we put one of them into our hand and one into the lost zone. Now what's nice about this deck is we only need four cards in the lost zone in order to really make the idea of the deck work and so just two Comfies and a Call vs. Experiment is going to do that. Our attacker for the deck is Kramer Lost Provisions. If you have four more cards in the Lost Zone, ignore all energy in this, uh, in this Pokemon's attack cost. So you just hit for 110 damage. Now you're not doing any weakness, but there's not a lot of stuff that's weak to uh, water anyway, outside of like maybe Radiant Charizard. For the most part, that's about it. So we're hitting for 110, and it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you consider the fact that we don't need any energy in order to really make this a thing, 110 is pretty good. We also have Articuno, your basic water type Pokemon's attacks, except Articuno's, do 10 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So we have now Articuno, which is going to bring our 110 on Kramer to 120. Then we have something like the Choice Belt, which is going to do an extra th uh, 30 damage to V Pokemon. So now we're at the 150 mark. 150 and 150 is enough to one shot or two shot. Pretty much anything in the game. Could you make an argument for Drapion? Yes. Is Curum a problem? Probably. Is Empoleon a huge problem? Absolutely. When it comes to the Empoleon issue, because we can settle that one first, Escape Rope is going to be huge. Being able to find an Escape Rope is very, very important. Being able to boss up something is really important so we can get that Empoleon out of the active and then start using our Comfies and chipping away at things with Cramorant. If that Empoleon stays in the active and we can't deal with it, we pretty much lose the game. We do have a Mana Fee to protect our bench against things like Radiant Greninja and also just the random Snipe decks for Battle VIP Pass to try to find our Pokemon super quickly. We do have those escape ropes like I mentioned. Scoop up nets and switches are going to help pivot and allow us to reuse the comfy so we can get, uh, you know, kind of run through the deck and find all the pieces we need. In case like our mana fee or something is prized, we can use Hisubian Heavy Ball. Uh, Lost Sweeper, not super necessary, I think, but it is nice to get rid of maybe your opponent's stadium that they're kind of relying on, get rid of a tool they like, and it's going to help put cards into the lost zone for us. So that maybe we only need a Culverse and a uh, like a Lost Sweeper. And we can even target our own items so that we can get four into the Lost Zone in one turn. Let's say we have a, an Air Balloon or a Choice Spell attached. We can remove a card from hand into the Lost Zone. Choose one of our own Stadiums or uh, Tool Cards. Put that into the Lost Zone. Now we're at two. We play Culverse for turn. We're at four. And now we're able to start hitting with Cramorant for free. Really nice. Uh, Ordinary Rod, just not for the energy, of course, but really just to get Pokemon back. They knock out our Mana Fee, they knock out our Articunos or something like that. We can start to get them back. We need to be able to get our Cramorants back so we can continue our assaults. Just a bunch of Pokegears try to find our boss, our Culverse, maybe our Raihan, so we can find that escape rope we need to get the uh, Empoleon out of the active. Uh, quick Balls to find Pokemon. We talked about Switch and Scoop. That Trekking Shoes is pretty much... Uh, a different version of flower selecting. Look at the top card of your deck. If you like it, you put it into your hand. If you don't, 
discard it and draw another. Now, it's good because if you don't need the card that you draw, then, well, you just take the next one. But you don't know which, like, which one's better. You don't know if you rather keep the boss and then discard. Like, with Flower Select, you can look at both of them and say, oh, uh, what if it was a bad VIP pass? Well, it's not turn one of the games, so that immediately goes because I'll never be able to use it. Whereas, like, oh, I don't need this boss right now. But then you discard it and then draw like a battle VIP pass. It kind of feels a little bad if it's not like the very beginning of the game. A couple of Path of Peaks try to shut down our opponents in Polion, Try to turn off their Star Portal, Muse, things like that. Some uh, Pokestops to just get rid of items and then we can kind of draw them back. We have a lot of items in this deck. We have 12 Pokemon and then a lot of items, zero energy. So Pokestop's going to be hitting stuff. We only have... Uh, eight supporters so the odds of us hitting a supporter are pretty low and then once we get our bench set we don't really care too much about our pokemon choruses experiment look at the top five cards of your deck three of them go into your hand two into the lost zone raihan you can only use it if your one of your pokemon was knocked out during your opponent's last turn attach oh you can't even play raihan you can't even play raihan because we don't have energy so that immediately goes <laughs> we'll throw in uh i guess we'll put in another air balloon as a nice little pivot you, you needed energy in the discard to use Raihan. I'm glad we kind of talked this, this. See, this 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 is part of the deck building process. I get questions like, how do we build a deck? How do I know what's good? You throw things together. And then you start to talk about it and why different cards are good and how things work. And then you come across something like this where it's like, you can only play Raihan if you have an energy in your discard to accelerate to one of your one of your Pokemon. We don't run any energy, so we'll never be able to use that Rhyon. So it's okay that we added it as long as we talk to it and realize, oh, this actually isn't a good fit for the deck. Let's cut it and move on. And I'm sure if you didn't get to this point in the video and you're like, this, this, I can't believe this amateur has a Rhyon in the zero energy deck. It's, it's a pretty common inclusion for a deck that's going to be a, a single prize deck or something that's going to get knocked out pretty frequently just because. Now, could we add like a Cynthia's? Yeah, sure. But I think the second air one's probably okay. Just as like help kind of guarantee a free pivot each turn. Um, and then we have a bunch of choice spells so we can do a bunch of damage to our opponent's active V Pokemon with the Cramorant. And that's really the whole deck. I, I, I wanted to leave in the little Raihan nonsense just because i want you to see this is how people deck build you put something together you talk about it you think it through and then you say okay this actually doesn't work for xyz reasons or it you don't catch it maybe I, maybe i didn't catch the raihan we just play a game or two and then i try to use the raihan and it clicks and i'm like oh man i can't. there's nothing wrong with building a deck trying it saying this doesn't work let's rework it let's revisit it it's part of the process and i think being able to look inwards and say oh i made a mistake i you know i built this poorly i i made some mistakes in this that's perfectly fine as long as you're able to you know accept and acknowledge the mistakes i think you'll be all right and you're making improvements so yeah uh that's the deck list let's go ahead and see how it does i really wish there was like a search function like why is there not a search don't get it, but hopefully we'll be able to search for decks with live if, and if that's any good. Uh, but yeah, okay, going into game number one, I'm a little bit concerned about this deck. I think Empoleon and VMAXs pose a particular challenge. We're only hitting for two uh, for 150. It's not really enough. We don't have quick shooting where we can like tack on a little bit of damage here and there. Um, we start the Manaphy and the Articuno. Not a great hand, but we never have to worry about being energy drought or energy. Oh, we're playing a, a swim freely deck. Interesting. So this is kind of nice because we don't really care about how much damage they can do. The whole thing about swim freely is that they can do a ton of damage to, uh, to like a Pokemon V-Star or V-Max with a single prize pokemon i uh, we don't really care they're gonna, they're gonna be able to one shot us almost no matter what uh we get a trekking shoes we get a switch um i will keep the switch because we can quick ball away the choice belt 
since we're playing the Swim Freely deck, to get a Comfy. And now we can use the switch to Flower Selecting. And we'll get a Battle VIP Pass, which is wonderful off of the Comfy. We'll go ahead and use it. We're going to get a second Comfy and a Cramorant. We'll throw down the... Is this only V Pokemon? Uh, okay, we can throw it down. We'll Culverse. But we don't find another switch out. That's really bad. So that's one of the problems with this deck is that we're not going to have an energy that we can attach to the Comfy for turn to retreat into another Comfy. So now we just sit there and we're we're st we're stuck. Uh, that's I really don't like that. I'm at least. I'm used to it. Maybe the four switches are necessary for that reason. I'm running three. I'm running, I think, three escape ropes. We will be able to knock out this Dugong with the Cramorant, assuming that we can comfy and then find a switch out of some kind. But we do have the boss. Eventually, we'll be able to knock out the Bibarel. I do kind of want to get this Dugong out of the way. I mean, they're going to shuffle those energies back into the deck, but they do have to shuffle both, which is kind of nice. But yeah, this uh if we had hit last time we would have been in a really good position. So Culverse is very nice. We got a Cramorant. Scoop on that switch. That's fine. I'm okay going here. We'll flower selecting. Uh Echo Horn's kind of nice. And we will switch into the Cramorant. And just be able to take a KO. So part of the, the issue with these single prize decks is that it's not too, too unrealistic for the first person who gets the knockout to keep going. Uh, will they be able to tack on three energies to get a KO onto this Dugong, uh, onto this Cramorant? Yeah, probably. All they need is a Finneon and three energies in hand and they're able to do it. So if they don't, then I can start to pull ahead. So here comes an Ultra Ball, which is an interesting choice. If Ultra Ball for a Finneon does not feel very good. But I guess because they want to thin the hand out so they can draw more with Bibrel, it's not bad. So we'll see if they try to draw into what they need or if they want to thin a little bit more. You got to be careful about thinning too many resources, especially against a fellow single prize deck. Uh, where you are going to be taking six prizes. It's not like a V-Star deck or a V-Max deck where you can hit into them and, you know, do a bunch of damage and say, okay, I'm, I, you know, the game's going to be kind of short because I just need to make two, three attacks. you got to make six attacks here, minimum. I mean, if you whiff an attack, then you're in a little bit of trouble. So we'll see what they pulled off of that. They get a Nessa. And they're going to have enough energy to take the KO. They find the Nessa. Now, we, we don't really care about how many energies we have. We don't need any. Um, so that's kind of nice. They're going to attach to the B-Barrel so they can retreat if they need to. But if we knock out those Dugong and they don't attack the next turn, we do have the boss to get that other seal. And because that goes to the, the, it goes to the deck, it doesn't go to the discard, and the Nessa doesn't help the next turn. Let's go ahead and get rid of this battle VIP pass to get ourselves another Cramorant. And I want to save my ordinary rods until I get two Cramorants into the discard. We're just going to go ahead and spin innocently, force them to have the other Dugong, force them to have the three other energies. Escape rope's not bad. We can, like, play the Comfy. They got the Dugong. I really should... Uh, part of the problem is, like, bossing the Finneon is that it's just a basic Pokemon that it's very easy to find. Uh, it's very easy to find another one. So, is it worth bossing the Finneon just for them to find it again? I don't know. I guess it really just depends... 
I would really like to take out their dugongs and seals because they're real threats. So, they had used Bibrel. Get an energy into the discard. Find another seal. But, like I said, all it takes is for them to whiff one knockout. And they are going to They have the Cynthia's to draw a full seven cards. Not full because you can draw up to eight. But the odds of them finding water energies or capacious bucket, training court, pretty high. So we'll see how many energies they end up getting. And it looks like they're getting three. I'm sure part of them regrets attaching to that b bro. Yeah. Oh no, they could just they can still get rid of it with the uh dugong. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be attached to the dugong. Man, where are, where's my snipe decks when you need them? Let's go ahead and ordinary rod. Get those two cramorants back. And now we can trekking shoes. Try to. Uh, no, I don't think we need that. Poke gear. We can use that. Uh, well, I guess we're finding a boss. And I do want to Lost Sweeper their training cord. I don't want them to be able to use it. And we'll just uh, just keep attacking. And it's whoever misses, whoever misses an attack wins. Or I guess loses. That quick ball is pretty nice. And we can guarantee get ourselves a Cramorant next turn. Our opponent has quite a large hand. Ah, oh boy. So, they have the bucket. Sure, why not? Just... This is the, this is the thing, you know? We, uh, we missed our turn one attack, which is really problematic. So, because of that, we probably end up losing... As their deck gets fewer and fewer cards, it's much more likely that they're going to draw into energies. But they need to get a third energy here. I mean, they're going to thin the hand so they can draw with Bibro. Drawing one's a little risky. But, you know, in a deck that plays 10 to 14 energies plus Capacious Buckets, they haven't used the Supporter yet. Uh, so, but I don't think they have any in the discard for Nessa to be useful. So they'll draw two. They find a Dugong. And the Capacious Bucket. Of, of course they find it. Of course they do. Yep. And now they'll start attaching to the other one. So they need one fewer the following turn. That sounds about right. Uh, I think... I'm going to get rid of this Finneon. They've yet, I mean, they could very easily play one, but I, I'm kind of hoping they've gone through enough resources that it might be a little challenging. I don't think it will, but we're going we're gonna to try it. I, I'll bet money that they are able to... Uh, we will... Get rid of the Echo Horn. We don't, we're not going to need it because they, they have enough Pokemon in play for us to deal with. Might as well. Flower Select. Uh, escape Rope. Okay. We'll use the Escape Rope. Doesn't matter what they give us. They're going to give us the Seal probably or the other Bidoof. Yeah. That's what I expected. But we are going to take I mean, if they... Maybe the Beaver also, they can't draw. Maybe I'll take the Beaver also, they don't draw. But they have another Bidoof down, so... I don't think it's particularly helpful. Just kind of have to hope that they don't have another. Or maybe I should have took the Dugong with the energy. I think either one is... Uh, of course they have... Oh, of course they just have it. <laughs> This is, you know, this is part of the problem with single prize decks. Playing another one is, it really does boil down a lot of times to just 
And they had the quick ball to get the other Finny on, so it didn't matter. So maybe the Dugong with the energy would have been the right choice. But all I need is a bucket or to draw into two energies, and it doesn't matter if I knocked out that one or not. So, because they had one in hand. They had a Pokemon catching my Articuno. And they had the energy. So it does not, it, it would not have mattered which one I picked. Uh, so I went with the one I thought would be best. And I'm going to boss up the Finneon or the Beebrel again. I kind of hope they just get stuck. That's my plan. Oh, uh, then they're going to Nessa. But they don't, I don't think they have any water energies in the discard. So they, they get the Finneon. That's fine. They're going to. Will return if they get another Bidoof, I'm gonna be so mad. Okay, they get a Manaphy. That's fine. I don't really care about the Manaphy. It's not gonna do anything. They're just trying to thin their deck out. So now I have to hope if I can take out this B Burl, they can't draw, and that they're kind of just stuck missing attacks because they win next turn if they have two energies in hand. Don't really have much else to do. I'll poke again to try to find something that we don't hit one. Uh, sure. I should probably ordinary rod. Get those crams back into the deck. Should have done. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We didn't have any Pokemon search anyway. So really have to hope that they don't top deck like you know, uh, a capacious bucket or like a Cynthia's or something. <sighs> of course. Of course. They just have it. Ultimately, I think the deck is really fun. Do I think it's like the best single prize deck in the world? I mean, it can be. It really depends on what you go against. But with all the Cramorants running around that just one shot you in return, all of the flying Pikachus that you might encounter, all the other single prize decks, whether they're uh, Swim Freely, whether they're Reggie's, whether they're whatever, the Italian Charizard decks, like it's just so hard to play a single prize deck that relies on two, maybe sometimes three shotting things. Uh, it's just, I don't know. Uh, may maybe this deck needs like a Leon so you can get a guaranteed two shot, but uh, Empoleon's really problematic because then you, even with Cramorant, you can't damage the Empoleon if it's stuck in the active. So uh, you would have to like escape rope and then get the Cramorant or new Cramorant back into the active and then hit. But then the next turn, they're probably just going to bring the Empoleon in and attack your Cramorant KO it. And now they have this Empoleon in the active that you have to deal with. It's just... I, 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 I don't know. I just don't really see it. If you go first, that can be dangerous because then your opponent... The, the likelihood of them being able to uh, attack with Cramorant back that turn or something like that. It's just really high. I don't know how I feel about this deck. It is fun. Not needing any energies is really cool, but there were times like we saw with my opponent where they were able to attach an energy for turn to retreat into a comfy, and if I could have done that, maybe things would have done been a little bit better, but we don't have energies to do that, so maybe you have to maximize air balloons, uh, switches, escape ropes, scoop up nets, like you, you have to have them. I don't know. I'm not super sold on it maybe i just need to play more with it and and keep it going but at the moment i think i'd rather have the energies but we'll have to uh we'll have to see and find out but that's gonna do it for us today thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed found some informative it, the deck i showed what the deck wanted to do so uh, I'm, my mission is accomplished whether or not this is the best build whether or not i played it perfectly up for debate however I showed what the deck wanted to do, use the Lost Zone engine, use Articuno, attack into things. Did I get those big two-hit KOs on Pokemon Vs and V-Stars? No. 
but there might not be as many of them running around with the Lost Zone engine. So, uh, you know, you have to take everything uh, as you see them. Just maybe it's not the right time for it. But yeah, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Found it informative. If you did, like, subscribe, comment. Uh, check out the Twitch stream. I will be live uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, and then I'll be in Baltimore for the regionals. And when we come back, we'll talk about the regionals. Uh, and But yeah, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Found some informative. If you did, I already did all this. Thanks so much. I will see you next time.